A very good afternoon to one and all present here. Myself, Nandan Dabda, research scholar at Sardar Vallabhbhai National Institute of Technology, Sudat, is here to deliver my presentation on modeling effect of urban area activity reorganization strategies on the travel demand of a city. Before going into the presentation, first of all, let us understand the motivation behind the present research. If we look into the past, then the transportation planning in India has occurred in a disorganized and scattered manner. As a result, the urban transport system in most of the cities has evolved towards the development of infrastructure for the mobility of two-wheelers and four-wheelers, complemented with absence of organized public transport and absence of footpaths and cycles. While on the another hand, the high dependency of city dwellers on private mode for more than a decade has given rise to increasing transport externalities like environment and road damage, accident, congestion, lack of parking spaces, and many. To cater this problem, based on the National Urban Transport Policy, ample number of policies and strategies like transit-oriented development, employment decentralization, increasing vehicle occupancy by ride sharing, concepts like work from home, tele-shopping, tele-education, variable working hours, and many more were introduced by the local government into the cities in last decade. But in spite of these measures, still, the propensity of people to change their travel behavior was a big question. And meanwhile, the year 2020 arrived with the COVID-19 pandemic. To reduce the probability of spreading of coronavirus, the entire nation was completely locked down for 70 days, that is, from 25th March to 31st May 2020. During this period, the demand of people to travel was reduced to zero, and consequently, city residents started accepting the idea of WFH, that is, work from home. The education sector of India witnessed the paradigm shift by introduction of online classes and exams for the school and college students. So, it can be interpreted that lockdown due to COVID-19 pandemic forcefully habituated people towards the new way of working and getting educated. With this motivation and considering COVID-19 as a blessings in disguise, the present research attempts to analyze the effect of various activity reorganization strategies on the travel demand of city. These strategies were designed on varying the operating capacity of the workplaces and schools, and based on that, eight scenarios were generated, which are explained in the later slides. These are, these are the content of my presentation. Beginning with the overview of travel demand modeling, followed by understanding the approach adopted for the development of TDM model of Surat City. Further, various scenarios generated using Cube software are discussed. And finally, policy interventions, conclusions, and limitations. Beginning with travel demand modeling. TDM can be understood as a process of visualizing the complex chip making behavior of people in a simplified manner, that is, in terms of traffic flow and transit ridership. As we all know, it consists of four major stages, that is, trip generation, which estimates the number of trips originating and terminating in zone, that is, the productions and attractions, trip distribution, which balances the total productions and attractions and estimates the PA matrix, mode choice, where the analysis and prediction of the choices that individual makes and select the transport mode based on the trip is done. And finally, trip assignment, where the traffic is assigned to the transport network, which is used to estimate the traffic link flows and transit riders. Cube Voyager is one of the best software available in the market for the development of TDM, and hence, present analysis has been carried out on the Cube platform. The current research work was carried out for the Surat city, which is located into the western part of India in the state of Gujarat. The city is located on the bank of river Tapi, 
and is divided into seven major administrative zones with the build-up area of 234 km square. To provide the faster mobility, 128 flyovers and bridges are constructed and among them, eight bridges connect the west zone to the remaining city. Before modeling the travel demand in Cube software, the four major steps are needed to be carried out. First, the division of entire study area into the smaller segment, which is popularly known as development of traffic analysis zone. Second, digitalization of existing road network. Third, coding of the public transport routes. And lastly, calibration of parameters used in each stage of travel demand. Let us understand each of them in detail. Beginning with the first step, based on the criteria of population density, the city was divided into 37 TAZs. It can be very well articulated from the figure that the higher population growth rate are observed in the north and southeast zones. The population in the central zone, that is the CBD area, is on decline and has experienced the negative growth rate of 0.12% in last five years. The key parameters of cities are shown over here. The population of city is 5.5 million. The area, as per the census 2011, is 326 km square, while the average population density is 301 persons per hectare. The work participation ratio is 40%, resulting into 2.2 million workers in the city, and the Surat, which is considered as the diamond capital of world and textile capital of India, contributes to 2.5 million employment in city. Presently, 758 schools and 76 colleges are there in city, which contributes to 1.2 million of student enrollment. And if we look to the two-wheeler and four-wheeler population per thousand, then it is observed to be 376 and 67, indicating the dependency of people on private modes of transport for their mobility needs. The second step is to digitalize the existing road network using the Q QGIS software. The street network in Surat has developed a radial ring pattern consisting of 14 major radial roads and 3 ring roads. The entire road network was classified into 4 major link types for modeling into the cube based on the number of lanes. The capacity was inputted as 1815 PCU per hour as per the guideline of IRC and HCM 2010. The speed of each link types were derived based on the actual traffic survey. In all, 3850 km of the road network was digitalized and plotted in GIS. The percentage of the major roads, that is the arterial and subarterial, was found to be 18% of the total roads. The third step is to code the public transport route in Cube software. Up till 2007, the city bus service was operated by the State Road Transport Corporation. But due to lower fleet ownership, the services were stopped and later, in the year 2013, the first phase of BRTS started its operation in city. Presently, the city consists of 12 BRTS routes, and later, in 2017, the city bus services were resumed again. Presently, 43 city bus routes are running in the city. Both the BRTS as well as the city bus services are operated by CityLink Private Limited, which is the special purpose vehicle established by the local government. The existing public transport network coverage is 87% with 751 bus stops and 550 transit units plying on the roads of Sudat City. Along with this organized transit service, the informal public transport, that is auto rickshaw routes, were considered for the modeling. Presently, 47 IPT routes, which has evolved out with the passage of time, were coded into the Cube platform. And finally, the travel demand parameters were calibrated. For trip generation, the trips were classified into four groups based on purpose, 
that is home based work home based education home based others and non home based trips the trip and equations which were developed by the comprehensive mobility plan were taken for the present modeling the doubly constrained gravity model was used for the trip distribution and the calibrated value of alpha and beta of the tanner function published in cmp was taken as it is while for the mood choice the multinomial logit model was developed based on the household survey and the utility equations were calculated by one of the research scholar of the same department for trip assignment the coefficient values of bpf function were calibrated based on the traffic volume data collected on the major intersection and based on all this input data the base year travel demand model for the sidat city was developed and validated the result of developed model is presented over here the share of work and education trips was witnessed to be highest that is 76% followed by 23% of non home uh, non home based trips and 1% of home based other trips the design line diagram for the od matrix was plotted the maximum number of trips were originated from the southeast and north zone because of high population density while the maximum trips were terminated into the central zone due to high employment density based on the tld the average and 85th percentile trip length was found to be 5.5 and 7.5 km the results of the model output were also validated with the household survey data to analyze the operating condition of the road the link flow volumes were extracted from the software and the volume capacity ratios were calculated 26% of the total road network had the value of v by c greater than 0.7 and major congestion was observed on the ring road and on the roads of the cbd area after the calibration and validation of actual model various scenarios based on the activity reorganization strategies were developed the prototype for emerge to analyze the pre during and post lockdown conditions the pre lockdown model is the actual bayesian model which was explained in the previous slide During the lockdown the moment of the corona viral a corona warriors and the people involved in the essential services was allowed hence in the present study an attempt was made to calculate the total number of trips that took place during the lockdown period while the post lockdown scenarios were formulated based on the guideline provided by the local government authority which clearly specifies that city should be unlocked by reducing the operating capacity of workplace even the transit services were allowed to operate at 50% capacity the core idea for the entire analysis was to understand the reduction in travel demand that can take place if workplaces and schools are operating at different capacity the operating capacity of workplaces were varied from 10% to 50% while the capacity of schools were varied from 20 to 50%. At last, the actual unlock scenario which do exist into the city was also modeled. Hence, in nutshell, eight models were developed and analyzed using the cube platform, among which three were the real world situations and five were the hypothetical situations. For the lockdown condition, the production and extraction taking place in cities were derived based on the survey which was carried out at 45 multi specialist hospitals 28 police stations and major government offices based on the data ldm model was developed in the cube platform the study reveals that during the lockdown daily 4% of trips took place in comparison to the base year model even the reduction in the trip length was observed similarly modeling of all other scenarios were carried out on the cube platform and the results were extracted 
in order to get a comprehensive picture of all these scenarios together their effect on travel characteristics were analyzed the parameters like per capita trip rate trip length vehicle kilometer travel vehicle hour travel and average speeds were derived from the software and all these scenarios were compared together beginning with the pctr values the graph clearly indicates that only work and uh, work trips and no school trip that is unlock 6 can reduce the trip rate by 0.34 in comparison to the bayesian model that is prlm model the addition of 20% of working capacity results into increase in trip rate of the city by 0.12 TLD diagram implies that no much variation was observed in the trip length for all the scenarios except the LDM model. To quantify the reduction in travel demand, the savings in VKT and VHT were calculated. Here, the PRLM model was taken as the base, that is 100 percent, and based on that savings. in vkt and pkt P, uh, vkt and vht for each scenarios were derived to understand the mobility in each scenarios the average speed of the road network was extracted and which is shown over here the traffic link flows for all the scenarios were obtained and the v by c ratio was calculated which is shown over here the major observation was that with increase in the proportion of the trips the percentage of roads with higher v by c value also increased the entire analysis was carried out for all these scenarios to quantify the effect of this scenarios on environment the reduction in co2 emission was derived the carbon emission factor was obtained from the policy document and it was multiplied with the vkt values for each modes of transport again here the prlm model was taken as the reference category and the reduction in emission for each scenarios were calculated as shown in figure policy interventions The present study was carried out by hypothetically varying the operating capacity of workplaces and schools. In order to execute this concept into the field, the following policy interventions needs to be adopted by the local authority. Based on the trip purpose, different policies needs to be adjusted for the city which is shown over here. conclusions and limitations the cube software acts as a comprehensive platform to design analyze and evaluate various scenarios related to travel demand of city in the present work an attempt was made to formulate various hypothetical and real world scenario representing the pre during and post lockdown condition the reduction in travel demand based on each type of scenarios was calculated and its effect on environment was justified the results of vcr ratio reveals that the low congestion was observed on the road for the unlock 1 and 2 scenario hence operating workplaces and schools at 30% capacity can help to achieve better mobility in peak hour the present study assumed the percentage of work and education trips but in real world scenario uh, situation the effect of such policy needs to be analyzed in detail specifically in context to the readiness of the people to adopt this policy the investigation related to effect of these strategies on to the gdp of the city needs to be conducted acknowledgements I would like to thank my guide Dr Gaurang Ji Joshi and Dr Srinivas Adkarkar for constantly supporting me I would like to thank Dr K V K Rao and Mr Chetan Kumar Hani for always providing the technical guideline would like to thank even Mr Ashish Tang the PG scholar who worked with me for the entire project and finally 
wholeheartedly i would thank luke chang and vipul modi for providing such a platform on which we could showcase our research thank you